give you a very quick presentation about the organization and also about the discussions we had in February this year with the overseas Indian community. Uh, as part of the participative dialogue that the government has initiated with the Indian diaspora, in February this year, the external affairs minister chaired a discussion on how the Indian diaspora can play a larger role in India's social and development efforts, particularly in the context of the organization, India Development Foundation for Overseas Indians. And we had the pleasure of uh, inviting uh, several overseas Indian domain experts to this uh, meeting, and also some resident Indian experts who are already either working in the area of philanthropy or active with Indian community organizations. And the group discussed mainly about how uh, we can work more uh, actively and in a more effective manner with the Indian community to enable them to contribute to these programs. So the community, as you know, is spread uh, worldwide at the moment. Uh, it's growing, it has a very large geographical footprint and also I'm happy to say that it's very successful professionally and well-placed uh, in all fields. And among the Indian diaspora communities, particularly in the developed world, US and UK, the community is uh, affluent and among the largest uh, earning members in those countries. And we also have seen very high remittances from the Indian diaspora year after year. Diaspora philanthropy, uh, several of amongst you have already been contributing to programs in India, to a sector or a cause of your choice. But we do hear from them that there are challenges that you face in the sense uh, there are not enough credible institutions and there's a lack of accountability and transparency. And they do not get regular reports about how the money is being utilized. And since this is one of the most important aspects for any member of the Indian community to see how their funds are being utilized, we recognize that here a platform like IDFOI has a lot of relevance. So as you saw in the film, it's a not-for-profit organization. And one of the USPs of the organization is that of the contributions we receive from the overseas Indians, everything is utilized for the project because the government pays for the operational and administrative costs of the organization. The entire donation amount is uh, used for project implementation. And we also believe in acknowledgements to the donors. Any asset that is created with the uh, help of a donor is given recognition at the site itself. Regular updates, reports are sent about how the project is being implemented, uh, both directly to the donor and also on the social media platforms on the IDF website itself. Among the projects we are uh, supporting at the moment, there are two large priority areas. One is Swachh Bharat Mission, and the other is Namami Gange, which is the national mission for clean Ganga. In addition to that, we are also enabling contributions to projects in healthcare, sanitation, education in various states of India. Last year, we uh, started working very closely with the Indian community, Indian uh, states, asked them for projects, and then they gave us projects which meet our specifications in various sectors. So we enable uh, contributions to these projects as well, other than uh, Swachh Bharat and Namami Gange. Some of the projects that we've implemented recently, uh, you can see glimpses of that on the uh, slides here. Uh, computer lab was set up in a school in Swaminarayan High School in Gujarat. And also another uh, couple of projects which you see, I will just leave these images with you. The more recent projects we've done pertain to Swachh Bharat Mission. And these were community toilets that we've constructed in Vijayawada, Tirupati, and Amritsar. 
of these one has become totally functional and the other two are going to be inaugurated very soon. And if you pay attention to the images that you see here, you can also see the uh, logo of IDF that is displayed there and the name of the donor uh, prominently also seen on the asset. We have several upcoming projects that are uh, either about to take off or will be implemented in the next couple of months, uh, including some in uh, Jammu and Kashmir in a girls' uh, college, additional classrooms in Punjab, and more projects in the sanitation sector in Rajasthan, some in West Bengal, Madhya Pradesh, and also Maharashtra. So that, that was a brief overview of the organization itself. And in February, the recommendations of this eminent group that you saw here were very useful for us in the sense they gave us a much more focused uh, direction. And they told us that we should strengthen our uh, USP, which is accountability, efficiency, and transparency. They also recommended that beyond uh, projecting itself as an organization which enables philanthropy, IDFOI should also be a, a platform which offers the most value for the contributions that are made by the overseas Indians. And the panel also recommended that in addition to monetary contributions, we should also facilitate other forms of contribution as well, such as knowledge or those who are interested in volunteering their time and uh, knowledge to those in India. The other recommendations that we found of relevance were that IDF was asked to have a very segmented approach, that we should approach different groups of overseas Indians uh, with a dif uh, different strategy. For example, that we should either have a country-based approach or an approach based on specific states or sectors or particular cause, because different uh, things appeal to different overseas Indians. We were asked also to strengthen our database of community organizations so that we have a much more effective outreach and to facilitate actual visits to projects by the donors and those who contribute. And one of the important takeaways for us was that everybody felt that because the second generation of overseas Indians is a very critical segment, IDFOI should also actively engage with them. And we have been doing that. I'll happy to share with you. We were also asked that in addition to our own outreach events uh, that we do in various countries, we should participate in community events abroad that takes, take place regularly every year. For example, annual conventions of the community organizations in US, UK, or other parts of the world. We were asked to also adapt ourselves to the new age digital platforms and focus more on mobile and uh, online platforms to connect with the diaspora and to enable donations through handheld devices and to use platforms such as YouTube for uh, better promotion. Uh, also working with Indian embassies and consulates was considered as a very positive um, aspect for the organization that because the embassies are anyhow in touch with the community organizations, we were asked to work very closely with them. We were asked to celebrate something called an IDF OI day in countries outside, so that one particular day is designated in a year for contributions by overseas Indians to IDF and the project supported by us. Some of these we have already acted on. We are also focusing on giving to the overseas Indians projects in their villages or hometowns. And you can see here some of the images from the social media outreach that we've undertaken for the projects. We have also launched an online payment gateway uh, recently. And through this payment gateway, we are enabling uh, overseas Indians to contribute a minimum of $100 to a project of their choice, or just to the IDF organization itself so that the funds can be utilized. We are working very closely with PayPal once their internal approvals are through, we hope to also allow uh, contributions through PayPal to uh, IDFOI. And we've been very actively uh, enhancing our database of 
Overseas Indian Association. We will circulate a paper. Kindly put down your question on paper clearly and uh, mention your name and your country also on it. And we will go through the questions and select those which we are uh, certain that are relevant to the topic that we are discussing today. And if the question is relevant, the chair will call upon the person who asked uh, the question to either elaborate or we can take the question ourselves. So with that, I uh, leave you here. And we hope that uh, we can uh, take away some more suggestions from you, your comments and your questions. And the idea is to build on your thoughts, your feedback, your insights, and to do our work much more effectively. Thank you.